better live than it did on records. So what, it, you must have been asked a million times, but what does it feel like to have been Johnny Rotten and the Sex Pistols there? Is it a memory, is it a... I don't know, I mean, ask the imitators how they feel. To me, it didn't mean too much. I just thought it was a joke. Can you look around and see yourself ending up, say, like the Clash have, like on this endless spiral? Of... God only knows, I hope not. <laughs> Were you the only one with ambition then? Because the other geezers in it, I mean, they seem to be lost. Uh, how much ambition are you have you talking got? about? Well, Stephen Paul, obviously not Stephen Paul. I don't know. Listen, I mean, in the Pistols, it was difficult because they were all into like, I don't, the regular rock and roll format, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and uh, I just couldn't write things like that. It worked for the time, though, didn't it? It worked, yeah, for a bit, and then Malcolm like began to take it all just too serious. Joe, one thing for you as well was being the musical force behind the Sex Pistols. I had nothing to do with the music of that band. I just wrote the words. You never wanted to write any music? No. Not, not the way they were doing it. My ideas were totally different. Another school of thought? Well, I mean, it was a chance for me, right? So I took it. Because I quite liked the way I write. Was it a laugh at the beginning? And I, mean, I just had to set off a duff old Chuck Berry reruns, but that's... I don't know, it got me a foot in the door, so I took it. Was it a laugh at the beginning? Did you think it'd amount to anything? I never thought it would get anywhere, never in a million years. It just was like a real good piece of fun. Two wave groups, like Graham Parker and The Rumour, Ian Dury and Elvis Costello. Fine, do you think it's a good career for a young man to get into, being in a group? <laughs> Come on, get some